Well, good morning, everybody. I am chair of this parallel session, which name is Territorial Dimension and Green and Digital of Green and Digital Transition. I propose this special uh, session together with my colleague uh, Carlos Marcos, he's here, and uh, with Giuseppina Casali, that is not here, uh, because we are also together preparing a special issue for regional science policy, regional uh, science policy in practice, uh, um, related with the, with the same topic. So in this session, I will present uh, two presentations and my colleague uh, Carlos Marques will present uh, the second presentation. So the, the, the first one, um, uh, I name it uh, Innovation and Sustainability Transition in Europe Agriculture. And uh, our question is um, if farmers are able and available to engage in this intensive long-term learning process demanding by the innovation process that are now demanding them, both ecologization of uh, agriculture and uh, the uh, digital revolution with the, the smart farming. This, uh, this research uh, question uh, results from an ongoing uh, uh, research that we are conducting under, under a H2020 project named AgriLink. And uh, what we have uh, um, called by attention is this that ongoing systemic innovation that is demanded to achieve these agroecological and eco-efficiency gains in long term in, are, are implied in all the process um, that are now claimed to the European farmers, both the ecologization that is clearly claimed by the Green Deal when it meant to cut at least half of the, agro, agro, the pesticides and agro chemicals that are used in agriculture, the smart farming, and also at other types of uh, innovations, more marketing and the organization and social innovation that we know little about in the case of uh, agriculture and rural areas. Um, so our research, as I, I have told, uh, has been developed in this contest. It's a very bro much more broader co uh, contest of the project the AgriLink, that has a general goal of uh, stimulating transition, sustainability transitions uh, in uh, European agriculture. Uh, we focus in a new concept, that is forthcoming a paper on this, on the micro -AQ. So we were looking at uh, um, a knowledge and the knowledge and innovation system in agriculture, but at farm level, at micro level. Um, and we try to understand uh, and by looking at these uh, keys, this knowledge and innovation system at micro scale, how farmers uh, take decisions respecting this type of innovations. So basically, we have used a, um, a mixed methods approach for a specific innovation, and we have studied a number of innovations, cover all the types of innovations. Uh, in a regional context, <coughs> region or infra-regional, a sub-region, a focus region that we call focus regions that uh, were selected at uh, NUTS3. And in that regions, we select a group of farmers that uh, have a similar technical economic orientation. Otherwise, it makes the comparisons very hard. So the innovation that we have covered in AgriLink um, comprise uh, technological, namely smart uh, farming, intelligent uh, uh, Internet of Things, uh, precision farming, and also process innovation more related with this ecologization trend that is more uh, be becoming more ecological both in biological pest control and then soil management. 
Uh, and then we also uh, included uh, uh, a number of innovations that are related with the marketing and social and collaborative arrangements. Uh, social and col collaborative arrangements more related with uh, the common management of natural resources and also trying to find innovative uh, arrangements to, to, to cope with the labor shortage that are very transversal to to some parts of Europe. Um, this is the, the map for the Europe. In Portugal, we select three cases and uh, uh, our um, findings today are about these three cases in Portugal because now we are, this paper is, a, 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 it's a draft paper. We are starting drafting it. Um, because we are now looking more uh, in depth to this data through this new question that is the the the, the demand the the, the fact that we understood that the um, this innovation to be uh, sustainable in in long term they need the farmers are available and um, are willing to uh, uptake this demanding cognitive process they keep uh, learning and they become active learning. It's very different from the past when the farmers mostly took uh, the technology up the shelf, on the shelf, and they just use it more passively. Now it's much more demanding. And what we have seen is that uh, few farmers are being able of uh, entailing this uh, cognitive burden. So we are s uh, starting now to dig uh, in deep in this question, so it's preliminary findings because we want to go in depth and to understand how we can uh, help farmers to in fact uh, engage and become motivated to learn to understand that they can benefit in long term in spite of uh, efforts and costs in short term. So how can we incentivize them to cope with this uh, gap? in cost-benefit analysis regarding their, their effort. So this is the, the, the framework. It was very complex. I, I, I will not enter in details, but we combined the, the gathering of uh, qualitative and quantitative data. And in the, the Portuguese case, we have a, a study in depth three case studies. One case study is about uh, what we can call uh, ecological <coughs> innovation. It's a very uh, interesting and pioneering even uh, at European level that is the enhancement of ecological infrastructures in vine arts in the Douro. So they are more advanced than most of the uh, wine regions that basically are uh, introducing uh, ecological farming practice such as cover crops and uh, um, other type but in Douro it's well I have no time to go in detail it has about being a very particular la landscape and they are now enhancing this diversity in the landscape so they are working with uh, the vineyard and as a as a as an ecological infrastructure so it's it's very interesting and very, very new and very challenging to, to farmers, the way they are addressing this. And the other case study it was in Tamgui Sousa region that is in the northwest of Portugal, near to Porto. And we select this region because this is a, well, what we call an intermediate uh, region. So they are close to Porto and we would ex expect that this short uh, supply uh, value chain would flourish in this contest. Uh, in fact, it was not the case, but I will give you some details later on. And uh, the third case was about uh, uh, smart irrigation sensor, so the smart tech, and uh, Luzire do Tejo, that is in the Tajos flatland, now is not, in the north part is no longer a flood plan, we can call it flood plan. And it's very interesting because now we are talking about uh, commercial farmers, including a diversity regarding the size, small to large farmers, that have a, a, common, uh, a similar feature because they, 
we all have this um, commodity model, they, they sell bulk at farm gate. Um, so it was interesting because they have the same business model and we try to understand uh, what, what makes the difference in adopting or not adopting and, and mostly in adopting in an in a active uh, way so they can keep uh, innovating and developing the benefits of the innovation in long term. So these are the cases for the persons that are not Portuguese <laughs> might have more difficulties with the locations. Well, it also uh, shows the diversity. It's very interesting because we also uh, uh, get this conclusion for Europe. Uh, we are a very diverse uh, uh, space in terms of uh, agricultural infrastructures, agricultural uh, systems, uh, and also innovations. They are very different and in different regions. And um, in some cases, we start to see combinations, but mostly these innovations are developed uh, uh, a little aside from each other. So regarding the time span of the innovation, it was uh, deliberated. The project tried to select uh, innovations that were already spread in the region. So it was not uh, things that were completely new, that we will find just one or two farmers. No, that was not our idea. Our idea was to have a, a spectrum of pioneers, uh, uh, more early adopters, late adopters, non-adopters, and even droppers, because uh, the, the, person, or the farmers that abandon innovation during the process. That is uh, uh, very new in the project, because we also uh, uh, are studying these cases. Why the, the, the farmers that firstly adopt innovation after more or less time, they decide to abandon it. And, and the reasons why they decide to abandon it, that is not the, the main issue here in this presentation. So we see that the numbers for adopters, non-adopters and droppers, and we see that in fact the case of uh, innovation abandonment is very important in the in the, the, the direct selling, what we can call short uh, food supply chains, but based on a collective action. So it's uh, the majority of the, the farmers drop the innovation at some point. In the other case, we don't see this problem of dropping. There is always some dropping, but it's not so relevant. Well, it's more relevant in uh, smart tech than in the agroecological uh, practice. And why? Well, it's not difficult to explain. Agroecology practice entail an intense involvement and uh, they have to change irreversibly a lot of things, in this case in vineyards, so it's more difficult to reverse it. And in uh, smart tech, it's much more easy to reverse. So they, they install the, the smart sensors, but sometimes they, they install it because they get a free trial or they get an incentive to do it. And after one, two, three years, they decide that it's too costly. And I can explain then why. And they just drop it also. So uh, all the innovations were for the case of tech and uh, direct selling, well, they have uh, around 20 years mm -hmm. with some peaks of uh, more adopting. Normal, no, in general, this peak of adoption, adoption are connected with some demonstration projects or some initiatives that involve collectively farmers in uh, seeing uh, uh, um, results and sharing uh, the, the innovation with other farmers. In the case of Doro, it comes uh, from more time ago because this is a, a more demanding innovation. It is a very intensive knowledge innovation, and it benefits and it shows already a process because it starts with the introduction of this um, integrated biological pest control, IPM, 
But then it starts to evolve to a more sophisticated innovation that is this, the enhancing of ecological infrastructures. But that, that of course benefit a lot from the learning that was already and the, the knowledge and the innovation system that was already in place uh, uh, derived by the introduction of the, the biological pest control, the, the common IPM. Well, uh, what we see in the results, and of course I'm just uh, showing you very few things. Regarding the Doro case, we see that the size matters. Not so much, but yes, of course, uh, non-adopters are basically a small-scale family business and not probably because they are small, but probably because of their business model. What we see is that the benefits of this innovation are mostly connected with the marketing com competitiveness and for that, only the winemakers benefit of it. So the, the, wine, the vine growers, they are also winemakers and have uh, produced wines and have own brands, they benefit. The others that just produce vines, uh, uh, sorry, the, the grape vines, or they just produce uh, wine in bulk, they don't see much benefit. So it's very much a question of uh, business model that is, of course, interrelated with the, the, the size of the farm. In the case of the, the direct selling in, in Tanga Sosa, what we see is that is more about uh, the, um, the personal uh, features of the farmers. Uh, so we see that uh, we have um, both uh, uh, very qualified and uh, little qualified in terms of education farmers. And that the, the more uh, related with agriculture in terms of education normally are non-adopters because they were young farmers in the past and they have the business model that is to uh, sell, bulk sell to the cooperatives and to farm organization and so they are not very much interested in this type of models. The ones that are interested in this type of models are the, the family that, uh, for instance, uh, they, they are retired or they are young farmers or they are part-time and they, they see here an opportunity to, to get some uh, income from, from selling the, the products that, that often, often they don't sell. They give or they sell very cheaply and that's so. In, in, the, uh, in the case of the uh, technological, the intelligent sensors, what we see well, it's that size matter. It, we, see, we saw that across Europe that, of course, uh, adopters have large farmers and that uh, in the case of uh, Luziria is very uh, understandable because what happens with the smaller farmers is that they have a very scattered uh, farms and hence it becomes very uh, expensive according to them or costly to have sensors in each plot because they have small plots and they found it costly. Subjectively, they found it costly because when discussing with other farmers that are these uh, active learners, uh, they just to tell, told us that, uh, why? well, w these small, these, these farmers, they don't give the time to, to see the, the benefits, the advantage, because they don't see the time, they don't give the time to understand how this uh, um, smart technology can improve uh, this dynamic uh, eco-efficiency of the, of the farm management and get uh, benefits in financial terms. So this, but this entails this um, um, burden in terms of cognitive learning and most of these uh, uh, farmers, even not only the small, even large ones, they, they are not available. They, they found it too, too, um, too burden to, to learn to use uh, smartphones and to read this uh, uh, synthetic information from engineering. So they find it very, very <laughs> complicated burden and they don't, well, they don't care. They just want to receive the ready 
to use information, and so they don't get dynamic gains, and that probably, according to what we have discovered, one of the reasons that probably the innovation don't flourish as much as we would expect it, because we have a very good knowledge and innovation um, system in this region. They, they are a good farm advisor system, and the farm, a lot of adopters, but active learners and that the ones that will lead the innovation, involve the, the smart farming are very few. And the, the main barrier is about uh, the effort in learning. So we, we have drawn, um, I don't know how much time I have, Carlos. No time? No, sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm, no, I'm not in going details, but basically we have uh, drawn all the knowledge and innovation system of the, the, the farmers for the three case studies in different stages of innovation. So when they become aware of the innovation, uh, when they decide to assess if it was the case, the innovation, and when they implement it. Of course, we considered uh, in this sampling, only the farmers that were aware of the innovation. So they were, no, in the case of known adopters, they were uh, adopter, known adopters that were aware that they could actually um, uh, implement the innovation. So we see very different uh, knowledge and innovation systems. We see, for instance, in, uh, in uh, biological pest, uh, pest control or in ecological infrastructure in rural we see the presence of uh, RID, it's very important, and a tripartite, like a triple helix uh, system with a farm-based organization with an informal peer-to-peer um, -peer learning network. It's very, very important, and, and we see that it grows across the innovation. Um, in the case of uh, direct selling in Tanga Sosa, we see a very poor knowledge and innovation system. So farmers are very depending of an NGO, that is a local uh, uh, development organization that was very e effective in launching the, the process, launching the initiative, but then were not able because they didn't have the skills nor even the, the, the function to support this type of innovation. And so when farmers were left alone, only few were able to, to survive, we can say. We have more in-depth studies on this. And the ones that, in fact, stayed in innovation, normally they went to a different direction and they abandoned this more collective action, the group, uh, group organization, and now they are individually driven, like in Romania or other, other Eastern countries that have signed. Uh, and in case of smart tech, we have a simple, a simple knowledge innovation system, but actually there is a very interesting feature here that is the, the farm-based uh, organization is very strong and they are very well connected with, with iTech uh, companies that are developing the softwares for the intelligent sensors. So uh, we don't see RID here, but RID is here through the, this connection that is informal but very strong between the farm-based organizations and the, the iTech developers. So concluding, because it's minus 10 now, <laughs> place-based knowledge and innovations are very important. That's what uh, we find in Portugal and in many areas, in many regions in Europe. And uh, they can overcome at a certain point that burden of uh, learning effort that is associated with innovation. Uh, but uh, what we see now, and I think there are very little attention from literature, to these difficulties, these cognitive difficulties, this learning. It's not only about money, and in most of the cases it's not about money. It's about the effort of keep learning new things and to adjust to uh, complex uh, information uh, uh, model of supplying 
by engineers, namely, and even in ecological innovation, it's also very demanding because they have to experiment and they have to test, they have to register, and it's also very burden. Most of them, they don't have time to do this, and so they are not sure if they are improving or not in terms of yields, in terms of uh, uh, um, incomes because they don't do the registration, it's too, too burden. So we need systems that uh, can um, compile this data and uh, monitor it and uh, create uh, data sets at a uh, place or sub-region level that uh, facilitate these innovation processes. So if we, in fact, we want to implement ecologization and smart farming in uh, agriculture in Europe in a broad uh, uh, scale, we need in fact to, to look at this, to develop this place-based keys, knowledge and innovation system, and create incentives to reduce this cognitive uh, demanding learn learning process. So that's all, thank you.